בוקר טוב לכולם. First of all, I'd like to, um, like to thank Ruth Marriott and Elizabeth Dorfman for sponsoring this uh, Dvar Torah. Le'ilu Nishmat, their mother, dear member of our shul, Francis Benjamin, who passed away on uh, Shavuot itself. Um, some of the things that I want to say um, concerning Matan um, Torah and Shavuot, uh, I think it can apply to, um, to Francis herself. Uh, and may her neshama have an aliyah began Eden, amongst other things, uh, the, the Divrei Torah, which was sponsored by her family. Uh, the Magain Avraham, in his commentary to Shulchan Aruch, asks the question, it's something that is raised by all the Mephashim, why is it that uh, we celebrate Shavuot on the 50th day of the Omer, when in fact the Torah was given on the 51st day of the Omer. The Jewish people went out of, uh, out of Egypt on it was a Thursday, the 15th of Nisan, and they um, received, we received the Torah on the Shabbat, the 7th of Iyar, which corresponds to the 51st day of the Omer. So, <coughs> excuse me, one of the answers that the Magain Abraham gives is that um, Roshia was instructed to prepare B'nai Israel for the, um, for the great day of Matan Torah. And I'll read to you what the, what the Torah says, just in English. In Shemot chapter 19, it's Psukim 11 and 12, the Psukim are like this, and Hashem said to Moshe, go to the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. In other words, two days of preparation and let them wash their garments and let them be ready for the third day because on the third day Hashem will come down in the sight of the people on Mount Sinai. Uh, but in fact what happened was that Moshe felt that two days wasn't an ample uh, um, preparation. He felt that the, that the Jewish people um, weren't yet ready. They were it was inadequate preparation. And so what he did was he added on a third day of sanctification and this third day was not part of uh, Hashem's original plan so uh, because Moshe added on a third day so instead the Torah was given uh, was not given um, on the 50th day of the Omer but it was delayed another day and given on the 51st day of the Omer now the Magain Abraham proceeds to explain and he says like this he says that when we celebrate Matan Torah what we're celebrating is not actually the day of the giving of the Torah. It's, it's unbelievable. We are celebrating the day on which the Jewish people um, completed their preparation for Matan Torah. And uh, that uh, seems uh, absolutely amazing. Why should we be celebrating the day in which the Jewish people prepared for the Torah and the actual day in which the Torah was given one day later, that's the day that we don't celebrate. And um, actually, Rav Shimshon of Hirsch makes the same point that um, nowhere in the Torah do we find that Shavuot is referred to the time of Matan Torah. We only refer to it as Chag Shavuot. And he says uh, exactly what the Magain Abraham is saying, um, that uh, Chag Shavuot are the weeks in which the Jewish people uh, prepared themselves for the accepting of the Torah. So, uh, as we say now, why is it so significant? How did the preparation now become more, point, more important than the actual event itself? And the answer is that uh, the preparation reflects, um, uh, number one, the fact that the, the Matan Torah, that the Torah that we were about to receive, that it's on a different plane. It's not like a wisdom, like any other wisdom. It's, uh, the Torah is part of the revelation of Hashem's wisdom and as such uh, one needs tremendous preparation in order to imbibe and absorb that wisdom and uh, the, the, the divine nature of the Torah is reflecting in the fact that one requires uh, moral and ethical refinement amongst the intellectual um, uh, the intellectual um, uh, preparation which is needed in order to accept the Torah. So that's why by we're saying that the preparation for Matan Torah reflects and is an expression of the fact that we're realizing 
that the Matan Torah is something which is divine and as such you can't just learn it like any other wisdom. You have to learn it with preparation. Seven weeks of preparation plus the extra days that Moshe Rabbeinu, extra day that Moshe Rabbeinu um, added on because we are dealing with um, a divine wisdom as opposed to a human wisdom. And this is reflected in what is written in, um, in Pika Avot. I'll just read it to you in Pika Avot. In chapter 3, Mishnah 11, it says, Rabchanina ben Dosa used to say, one whose fear of sin precedes his wisdom, his wisdom will endure. But if his wisdom precedes his fear of sin, that wisdom will not endure. So the Yerat Shemayim a person has to have um, in order for him to or her to accept now the Torah, this is something which is crucial. In that way, we find that the Torah is different to other wisdom. And I'd like to end off with um, with a very known, a well-known story about uh, Ratzfiyuda Cook, that he was uh, there was one um, institution which um, sent him an invitation. They said they were having an exhibition about his late father, the first chief rabbi of Israel. <coughs> Uh, and they were asked. They were. They asked him to come and see this exhibition. And he remarked to one of his um, students, one of his disciples, that he would have said, "You know what? I don't feel like going to such an exhi exhibition. Why? Because I can already tell from uh, uh, from the wording, etc., that um, what they're going to uh, put on display is my father's um, his uh, his wisdom. They're going to put. They're going to speak about his political acumen." They're going to speak about um, his other great leadership qualities as um, as a chief rabbi of Israel, etc. But what what they won't put on display is his at all is his um, his avat Torah, his yirat shemayim, his love of Eretz Yisrael, mitzvah the mitzvah of Eretz Yisrael, etc. And, and so I don't have like a an inclination to go. So in sum. We ask that uh, why are we celebrating not the day of accepting of the Torah, but the day in which we prepared ourselves the Torah? Well, that's the very answer. The preparation of for Matan Torah that reflects the fact that the Torah is special, and that it's we say in Pirkei Avot. In order to acquire Torah properly, one needs forty-eight steps of wisdom, and only then can one begin to, in some way, to imbibe and to accept the teaching. Of uh, Torah, that is what makes um, our Torah so unique. Can I just add on one point of uh, on the end of Matan uh, of Torah, which has got to do with Francis? So she always used to say that um, she used to say that she came from a background which uh, didn't know so much, but she was she was much willing always uh, to open to to learn all the Yanim of Torah. This reminds me of uh, what the Gemara says in Masechet Ta'anit, that the Torah is compared to water. And one of the explanations is because that water, uh, it always flows downwards. And therefore that the Gemara says that water, the Torah is, uh, reflect, uh, the Torah is compared to water because in order to accept the Torah, one needs a certain amount of humility, which Francis really had, open to receiving. And having said that, can I just conclude with a, a fascinating um, explanation of my late uh, teacher, Rabbi Hilevet Zechet Zaklik Vracha, who said that the Torah is compared to water for a different reason. Another reason, doesn't have to be only one reason. But his explanation is like this. I see there's water is something which has got, um, how did he put it? It's pure, there's no um, extraneous qualities to water. It's not like Coke, which has got a nice, like, bubbly, uh, um, a nice bubbly look and, uh, and, and uh, um, sound. It's not like tea, milk, it's got, it hasn't got any color to it. It hasn't got any odor. It hasn't got really any taste to it. There's nothing in the water that could induce a person, can sort of like uh, entice a person to, to, to have it, even though he's not really thirsty. Water is just like uh, the blandest of drinks in any, in any sense, that, uh, uh, in every sense of the word. So um, the point that he was trying to make is as follows. He says, you know, in all other um, systems of thought, etc., all types of behavior, they're things that are extraneous, that are a pull 
for a person to engage in a certain activity, even though he not really doesn't want to do it. A person sometimes will have a Coke or a beer or whatever, or a bit of wine, even though it's not 100%, because there's something which uh, pulls them because of the color, the bagay, the odor, etc., like we explained, that uh, to participate in the drink. But uh, Torah is not like that. Torah is like water. Unless a person is thirsty, thirsty, there's no reason that the person is going to have water. And uh, this is the this is the the message then, that uh, the Torah was described as water because if a person is spiritually th thirsty, he's looking, then the Torah can quench the person. If the person is like smug and he's quite satisfied, there's nothing that's extraneous which is going to be exciting to pull the person to Torah. On the other hand, other things that uh, they're exciting, they pull, even though a person's not thirsty, so yeah, that can be attractive. The greatness of Torah is a person has to want the Torah. I think that sometimes, maybe that's the reason why we've got Tikkun Lel. Tikkun Lel is that we stay up on the, the, the whole night in anticipation, in showing that we're thirsty, that we want, uh, we want something now of, uh, of the divine. And in that way, Bezat Hashem, when Hashem sees our thirst, um, then He will quench that thirst by giving us of His Torah. So, Chag Shavuot Sameach Lekula, Kol Tov.